In light of these new developments, the House of Representatives reopened its probe on the controversial anti-dengue vaccine. Sanofi officials told lawmakers they will not be refunding the government for the use vaccines because that is akin to admitting that their drug was defective. Here are the details. Sanofi Pasteur officials made it clear during the congressional hearing today that it will not refund 1.8 billion pesos for the used doses of the Invaxia vaccines. It also refused to set up an indemnification fund for recipients of the controversial vaccine in case any of them falls ill. With all due respect, we uh, decided to uh, uh, refuse the uh, proposal of the Secretary of Health to actually reimburse the used doses. The reason why is because doing so would imply that the product has, uh, uh, and is, is ineffective. Sanofi's recent statement comes after the UPPGH released a report that only three of the 14 deaths attributed to the vaccine by the public attorney's office are actually dengue-related. Lawmakers, however, are not letting Sanofi off the hook yet. For Surigao Delta Representative Johnny Pimentel, the health department must find other ways to recoup the 1.84 billion pesos it spent to vaccinate 840,000 Filipino children. House Health Committee Chair, Congresswoman Helen Tan, says Sanofi can still be held liable for withholding information on the vaccine from the government. And the palace agrees with Tan. Presidential spokesperson Harry Roque says Sanofi might even end up paying more than the total 3 billion peso cost of the immunization project. Health Secretary Francisco Duque explained that PAU conducted autopsy on its own. We have not uh, given authority uh, to investigating bodies which are uh, ostensibly under the jurisdiction of the DOJ. But certainly your information with regard to the credentials of uh, Dr. Erfe as a uh, self-proclaimed uh, forensics pathologist, I think there are certain groups that are looking into the veracity uh, of, of such a claim. So um, I, I will just have to await for uh, additional information uh, to that effect, Your Honor. By your office. Duque also revealed uh, that the Bureau uh, of Food and Drugs registered uh, the vaccine for use uh, in the Philippines minutes, despite not finishing clinical trials. Johnson. As the hearings ended, angry parents of Tengvaxia recipients tried to manhandle former Health Secretary Janet Garin. They were blaming her for their children's deaths. Garin thinks some parents are being fed the wrong information on Denvaxia to stir up controversy. Garin is facing at least three complaints related to the Denvaxia immunization program alongside former President Noy Noy Aquino. The social security system is asking President Rodrigo Duterte to approve a 3% member contribution hike this coming April. Cash SS President and CEO Emmanuel Dook told reporters last week that the rate increase is meant to replenish the agency's funds following the president's order to raise the pensions of retired SSS members. The state fund proposes a 1.5% increase in contributions per year until 2020 that will effectively raise members' premiums from the current 11% of their salaries to 17%. To talk more about this, let me bring in SSS Chairman Amado Valdez. Mr. Valdez, welcome to The Big Story. Thank you, uh, Ruby, and uh, good evening to all your viewers. Mm -hmm. and, and of course, this has been, we've been talking about these hikes since mm -hmm. last year. Uh, let's, we mentioned an April proposal. How is that looking? Well, we feel that uh, the president is now balancing the uh, things uh, that would impact on the people because uh, last week we received uh, his uh, approval also of our request for loan restructuring. Mm. So loan restructuring uh, would be a good... Uh, uh, development as far as our members are concerned because uh, uh, they had uh, some problems with the penalties, huge mm -hmm. penalty because they perhaps uh, out of uh, 
negligence, uh, oversight, uh, they failed to pay. So this is a good uh, direction. And it would impact also as far as uh, easing the burden when they uh, make these uh, additional uh, contributions. Yes. But may, may I also put it uh, on the record that last year, uh, the reason for the contribution uh, increase that we decided into it is because many of our employees, of our working class, uh, had been complaining, especially those who are already retired, mm. that there is a disparity between the pension being received by them and that of the GSIS. Yeah, from what uh, I gather from our members, they are looking at it more as, more as uh, savings. Mm. Uh, uh, contribution could just be, uh, in my, this question of semantics, but the right uh, word for it would be savings. Forced uh, savings. It's for basis. savings and therefore it will be translated into what they will be <clears throat> many years from now. Uh, uh, how would it is uh, the uh, their ability not to work uh, as far as their lives is concerned? That's why, in that context, uh, they have to look at it as part of the development of that culture of uh, mm -hmm. savings. Certainly, the there's that yeah. appreciation for social mm -hmm. security and for people to understand it. You mentioned a culture for it, and certainly that is vital to our yes, nation yeah. building as well. But just speaking about the, the political pragmatism of doing it mm -hmm. now, um, you also mentioned some success in, re, in, in a program to restructure uh, loans, for example, to SSS yes. members. And at the same time, and so people will look at that and say that, well, why, don't mm -hmm. we, why don't we improve the, the, the liquidity and the cash position no, of SSS first with these kinds of programs? And also, as politicians will always say, why don't we improve the, contribu the, the collection of uh, contributions uh, first? This is not a matter of either or uh, mm -hmm. scenario. It's uh, a complete uh, intervention as far as the totality of our efforts is concerned. Right now, uh, we are busy uh, putting in final touches uh, the joint venture uh, development of all our properties, uh, which means that we are targeting recurring income. So if we put this in place, uh, perhaps even our plan for increased contribution later, if this can be offset by the recurring income coming from these business developments that we are doing, then that the political problem which this kind of scenario will always be mm. present in all administrations. But they will be saved from being confronted with the issue of, again, increasing the rate because we have recurring incomes. That kind of intervention, which was uh, successful uh, mm. last year, uh, brought us a lot of increase in the, in the contribution collection. That's why even when like what are, we what spend are these things, things? even I mean, if we spend 37 billion mm. for the 1,000 additional increase, yes. it did not affect the profitability of uh, the system because on top of that, we still have about more than 10 billion okay. as excess. Uh, so uh, if we have another 17% uh, this year, increase in the collection, that 10 billion, which is given now because we were able to increase it to 10 billion, it could be higher. Uh, it will be higher this year, even without this uh, contribution uh, increase. Which then, which then begs the question that if we are looking so optimistically at these things, then why push for higher contributions? That's now? why my opening statement is that focus on the four savings, focus on the future. Hmm. And this is what we're trying to do. And okay. we have to start now. Okay, Mr. Valdez, thank you for joining us in The Big Story.